So I just visited Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and you know that whenever I visit a city, I will have to check out its transit system. So in this video, I'm writing all rapid transit network of Calgary Transit. Let's begin. So technically saying this is another transit exploration video, but unlike other transit exploration videos where I set a timer and try to get to as many stations as I could in the shortest time frame possible, this video is just a ride recap of all the rides that I've made on different systems of the rapid transit network. Calgary's rapid transit system includes two light rails and four bus rapid transit lines serving the quadrants of the city. I'll also talk about the future project and what I believe the network should have in the future. I would gladly appreciate any contributions from Calgarians in the comments, so feel free to comment down below your thoughts or fun facts that you have to say about the system. I start off day one at Heritage Park Station, located next to the entrance to Heritage Park. This station serves as a service point for workers and visitors of the park, as well as nearby residents. This is also a transfer point between the Max Yellow and Max Teal, the two BRT lines. Here's a quick review of the Bus Rapid Transit Station. It has a long platform lying on a dedicated transit way at speed limit of 70 km per hour. Both sides have a shelter and a roof with a big sign telling people that it is the stop location. They also come with an electronic dashboard showing the estimated arrival time of the bus based on the real-time information and the weather information. This station also has some locomotive engines indicating the heritage value and tell people that, hey, this is Heritage Park, welcome. And I hopped on a Max Teal northbound towards Westbrook Station. This line passes through the Rocky View Hospital and Mount Royal University. The bus was pretty empty and at some point, I remain the only passenger that I actually had to ask myself whether anyone uses this line. The bus driver then let me know that during the school year, the line is actually pretty packed. So definitely I gotta come back here and observe this during that time one day. Arrived at Westbrook Station. And here's the look of the bus, it's pretty old, eh? I already had an electronic ticket for me for this day, but I wanted to acquire a paper ticket just for my ticket collection, so that's why I hang around at this ticket machine. This is the look. Um, I would say it's pretty ordinary. And I couldn't even scan this, I don't know. Now's the time for the Blue Line LRT to City Center. And I just noticed something. Instead of saying the direction like north or west, the platform here says inbound and outbound trains instead. This is kind of interesting because these trains go past downtown, so definitely the inbound train will eventually become an outbound train without changing directions. So that was the outbound train to 69th Street. Nice. Uh, and we're still waiting for the inbound train. I need, I need to say what the sign says just so that I can get used to it. The ticket is $3.60 and now we're gonna get on the train to go to city center. $3.60 is the single fare price. Hey, the train is pretty empty. Shaganabi Point Station. Doors normally open on the right. The train that I was on was a Siemens train. Uh, and judging by the look, you can say that it's a pretty new train by the system as well. The train suddenly goes up a very tall viaduct and approaches Sanalto Station. I made a separate video about Sanalto that you can check it out. This viaduct seems quite out of place from outside the train due to the low rise buildings and high concourse, but it does give riders quite a good view. Now we're approaching downtown Calgary, entering something called the free fare zone where you can travel across seven downtown stations for free. Welcome to the TD free fare zone. Cruising down the streets in downtown here. Have to get off at the next stop to discover the next rapid transit line, which is the Max Purple. I got off at 3rd Street Station and now it's time that I walk to the Max Purple stop. I heard the train honks behind me. Here's also the Carfree Street, Stephen Avenue of the city. I, I do see that there's a road closed. Let me know, I have to find a detour. 
I've been to Calgary many times and I can still not fathom the fact that their downtown streets are so wide. Also while waiting for the Max Purple, one thing that struck me, I forgot to introduce the 300 Express buses. These are just buses with limited stops and more about that later in the video. I saw the Max Purple here but it's stuck behind cars. Max Purple is a rapid bus line going eastward of the city and will be considered extending to the nearby municipality of Chester Mere. I would actually love it if this bus has a western expansion to interline with the current Route 305, which is only served a few trips per day. Despite being a rapid bus, this will enhance another crosstown connection. This might be a heated argument, but if you can have five lanes for cars, and you can have one lane for buses and one lane for bikes. One thing that I noticed from this Max Purple is that it gets stuck in traffic a lot and especially closer to the downtown streets. Probably this is because the heavy number of junctions that are too close together in downtown. Also I finally get to see some bike lanes although I really wish that this network is more abundant than what it has right now. I'm not saying that it's bad, it's just that it really needs some extension. We get to enter a transit way. A pretty good design from this transit way is that, despite running parallel with the highways, it bypassed all the junctions. The transit way still runs parallel to the Ontario 17th Avenue, but since it's so wide, I imagine crossing the street here would be a hassle. Also, the separation doesn't give us a pass to rush through an intersection, because traffic lights seem to be pre-programmed for left turn traffic. I'm low-key jealous if all those cars are able to move right now. Like. The smart signal will solve some of the problems here. However, at certain points, the bus was able to pick up a pretty good speed. I finally got a clip exemplifying how this transit way is bypassing a huge highway junction and here's proof. After the transit way, the Max Purple turned into a median bus lane on 17th Avenue Southeast. This bus lane is good for separation with island platforms for passengers. Another good feature in here is that these bus lanes are paved separately with a different paint as well, create a good separation. The road surface might use asphalt and this bus lane use concrete, red concrete in particular. However, the bus lane ends east of 52nd street and it turns out to be a road like this. So I just got off at 61st avenue station. Um, I, call, I, I think I put station in quotes, it doesn't look like a station at all. There's a huge road there that I have to cross in order to catch a bus to the Max Orange line. I then cross six lanes of traffic to walk back to 52nd Avenue so that I can catch a bus number 23 to go to a station of the Max Orange. Now, in my defense, I made a mistake here because I could have gone off at 52nd Avenue station, but when I realized that I was too far, it was already too late. Baking myself in the sun. I wish there are some trees on this clear zone. Come on, for Pete's sake. It took me about 15 minutes to walk back to 52nd Avenue Station. There was a 23 that just left earlier, so I took the time to observe the stations and get myself something to eat. I see my bus over there. That's number 23. I'm not sure if this is going to settle town so that I can catch um, the Max Orange. The ride on the 23 allowed me to charge my camera a little bit, so I'm now at Whitehorn Drive by magic. I tried going inside the bus shelter at the station, but turn out it's burning hot. It's even hotter than when you stand outside the shelter. These footages that you're seeing here is a proof of how much the urban fabric and infrastructures are taking up natural spaces. It's really hot on the day that I filmed this video, and I really appreciate if there are some trees or shades that allow me to have a more pleasant waiting environment as well as mitigation to the urban heat island effects. One of the waste potential of these BRT lines that I'm seeing is that they're quite infrequent. They run every 20 to 30 minutes and definitely could have been improved because it's rapid, it's fast, 
Therefore, it deserves more frequency so that it can move more people. Oh my god, you finally came! I'm already a baking egg in the sun. The Max Orange seems to be the most crowded BRT line that I've seen. However, this line does not have any separated and dedicated infrastructure. It's sharing the same traffic with the cars, therefore it gets stuck in the same traffic as the cars and have to stop at the same stoplights as the car. This explains the mediocre average speed. And incidentally, riding on this bus line allowed me to see some examples of bad, underutilized land use and urban design surrounding a rapid transit corridor. I eventually got off at State Station. This is also the stop that I recorded the most people getting off the bus. They're probably all students. Now it's time to cross the street to go through the school and catch the red line to go back downtown. State has some really cool architecture right from its front entrance, and it's a good way to attract students to come here to study. However, the crossing time at 16th Avenue Northeast appears to be super super long. I really enjoyed the walk across Sate. It's a well designed campus in my opinion, with rows of trees, promenades for students, and public spaces, and interesting buildings. However, does the school need this state of the art design for a parking garage entrance? There was some construction going on, so I had to walk along an outdoor path, and voila, I came across the train tracks. I blindly followed a sidewalk until it got so narrow and entered a random building. This is when I realized I have made a mistake and taken myself on a much longer route. But hey, seeing all the arts from the Alberta University of Arts was really fun. I do make a lot of mistakes today in terms of planning and finding the routes, but do I regret it? I don't think so. I get to explore places still. But editing this is going to be very fun. Oh hell yeah it was because I forgot to edit these footages for almost a month. While waiting for the train on the platform, I realized that these maps are incorrect. State Station of the Max Orange are not entirely next to the State Station of the Red Line. And this map doesn't even have the Max Yellow. The train finally arrives and now it's time I hop on it to go back downtown to meet up with some friends. I was hoping that I can still have some time window to explore the 300 express lines. If that happened, then this video had not been titled part 1. The second time of the day I'm passing through this area. Catching up with friends has been fun, and I also get to see the congested view of Center Street during the afternoon rush hour. By the way, I really like Chinatown Calgary. I ended the day by jumping on the Max Yellow. It's still very empty. I was feeling super tired, and it was also getting late, so I couldn't do a lot of observation. But I did notice some dedicated lanes for the bus, as well as the shared transit way with the Max Teal. Another interesting thing that I saw was the swirling and curvy pedestrian bridges that we'll certainly talk about in a future video. So this is it. This is the end of the exploration of all the rapid transit in Calgary. Don't worry, that's just the end for part one. Part two is coming soon. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for all your support that got me this far. If you found my content helpful or entertaining, you can further support me by checking out my buy me a coffee page for donation link in the bio. I highly appreciate any amount you chip in. Bye for now.